Hi, my name's Rosie. I'm a community midwife here at Queen's and I'm here to talk you through some things you should be aware of towards the end of pregnancy and signs that you might be going into labour. Going into labour refers to the process of your uterus contracting and your cervix dilating to allow your baby to be born. When you went for your first midwife appointment or your 12-week scan, you would have been given a due date. This is just an estimation and does not mean that your baby will definitely be born on that day. Only 5% of babies will be born on their due date. Focusing on a single date towards the end of pregnancy can be quite stressful, so just be aware that around 90% of pregnancies naturally last between 37 and 42 weeks, and that is considered a term pregnancy. So going into labour before your due date isn't always a concern. Any time after 37 weeks is completely normal. If you're having any signs of labour before 37 weeks, please contact the 24-hour maternity helpline on the front of your notes straight away. Before you go into labour, you may notice some signs that something is starting to progress. Some common indicators that labour might start soon are having loose stools or having a show, which means losing your mucus plug. In pregnancy, your cervix is long and firm like a tube. The mucus plug is a protective layer of mucus within the cervix, which acts like a barrier between baby and the outside world. When the cervix begins to soften and dilate in preparation for baby, this mucus comes away and comes out of the vagina like discharge. Because of the increased blood flow to the cervix, when you lose your plug, it may be a pinkish or brownish colour, which is absolutely normal and nothing to worry about. As long as you have no fresh red or heavy bleeding, a bloodstain show is not a concern. If you do have any fresh red or heavy bleeding, please call us and come in to be assessed. Sometimes your mucus plug comes away quite a while before labour begins, but if it comes away too soon, don't worry, it will regenerate. Next, we'll talk about when your waters break. Health professionals may refer to this as SHROM or rupture of membranes. This basically means that the amniotic sac that baby is in has ruptured and the fluid has started coming out. A lot of people think that when your waters break, it means that your labour has started or that your waters need to break in order for your labour to start. Actually, there are many factors that determine whether you are in labour or not, and not just your waters. Another common belief is that when your waters break, you'll get a big gush of fluid, and this isn't always the case. It's actually more common for your waters to trickle in smaller amounts. Always contact us if you're leaking fluid and are unsure if it's your waters or not. SHROM with clear waters is not a concern after 37 weeks. Many women will go into labour spontaneously within 24 hours. If you think your waters have broken before 37 weeks, please call and attend triage immediately. Because the amniotic sac acts as a barrier, when your waters break, your risk of infection increases slightly. Due to this, we monitor you closely and try to reduce the amount of internal examinations we offer you. Your waters should be a clear or straw-coloured liquid. Sometimes they may be pink, red or green. This may be more of a concern as you may have some bleeding or baby may have opened their bowels, so please mention this when you call us as we may want to see you sooner. If your waters have broken and you're not going into labour, we can offer you an induction where we use different methods to try and start the labour artificially. This will be planned on an individual basis. Sometimes you may have what's called a hind water leak. This is when the membranes behind baby's head have ruptured, but the membranes in front of baby's head haven't. So we may be able to perform something called an ARM where we break the four waters in front of baby's head as a method of induction before we use any hormones. Please watch our induction of labour video for more details on methods of induction. If you think your waters have broken or you're just not sure, please call us to let us know so that we can invite you in for a check. Pop a pad on so that the midwife who assesses you can see the colour of your waters. We may offer you a speculum examination in order for us to assess the cervix if you're having contractions or do a swab test to confirm the SHROM if it's not clear from your pad. If you have no additional risk factors, we advise you to return home and await events, as being at home in your own environment is really beneficial for hormonal production, which will in turn help your labour to progress. While at home, please avoid baths, sexual intercourse, and keep an eye on the colour of your waters and your temperature. Contractions or surges are the physical feeling when the muscles of the uterus squeeze to help push baby down the birth canal. Everybody will experience the feeling differently. Some may experience a dull ache across the lower abdomen or your back. 
a wave-like sensation from the top of the uterus down to the bottom or period-like cramping, feeling your tummy go hard and then soft again. Some people experience Braxton Hicks contractions or tightenings in the weeks before baby is born. Everybody experiences these differently, but they are unlikely to be too painful. They normally feel like a mild or uncomfortable tightening sensation. They're usually not regular or for prolonged periods of time. The early stages of labour, or the latent phase, is when things are just getting started and are still a little bit irregular. This stage can last a few days and can stop and start. It can be easy to feel stuck at this point as some people may feel that nothing is really moving forward, but this is the stage where your body is laying the groundwork and making lots of changes in preparation for the next stages of labour. In early labour your contractions may be irregular and spaced out, then as the labour progresses they will become more regular, closer together and more intense. Give us a call if your contractions are coming every 2-3 to three minutes, lasting for 40-60 to 60 seconds and have been regular for at least an hour or sooner if you feel like you may need more support or pain relief. If you've had a baby before, contact us a little bit sooner when the contractions are coming every four to five minutes, as your labour may progress more quickly with subsequent pregnancies, but this isn't always the case. Your contractions may not sound like how I've just described, but always listen to your intuition, and if you feel like your labour is progressing or you have any concerns, then make sure you call us. The progress of your labour can be affected by many different things like baby's position, your position, how you're feeling and your stress levels, if you're dehydrated or haven't eaten in a long time, or the efficiency of the contractions you're having. Some of these things are out of your control, but always be mindful of the things that are. Keep hydrated and eat frequently during the whole labour, even if it's small sips and snacks regularly. Wherever possible, be in an upright and forward position. Utilise the people around you and the equipment around you to find a position that suits you best, whether it's bouncing on the gym ball or kneeling with support from your birth partner. There are also things that can be done to help improve the strength or frequency of your contractions, like mobilising around the room that you're in or walking a short distance. Your health professional will help to guide you through. Please don't be disheartened if we recommend that it would be best for you to go back home after you come in for an assessment. You need to feel calm, safe and loved in order for your hormones to regulate and your labour to progress. And home is where you're most likely to feel this way. There are some things you can do to make coping at home a little bit easier, like listening to some calming music, using warm water in the shower or bath, a warm compress on your lower back or a TENS machine. But remember to stay upright and active, drink plenty and keep snacking. You can use relaxation or breathing techniques or get your birthing partner to give you a massage. If you feel like being at home is not the best place for you for any reason, please let us know. All care plans are made on an individual basis. Be aware that your baby should continue to move regularly throughout your labour. Please let your midwife know if baby's movements reduce, stop or increase rapidly at any point. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact your midwife.